Cool. All right, so let's get into some uh, modeling tools now. So um, right now, here's my cube. I just kind of grabbed on the top. Oh, and just so you all know, when you when you scale, you click on something. So I click on this top and you other programs, you might go from the middle and scale out with this program. I find it's easier just to click up, not on the object, but outside the object, off the object, I should say, and scale like this. Okay. Now, since this is in the cube, it's kind of like I would if I want to make segments, how would I do that? So what you can do is you right click and a lot of the tools right here. So let's go see. There is loop path cut, right? Loop path cut. So when I click on this, you see it kind of like scales it to how it's supposed to be. I mean, it scales it on the object. So if I click it one time, what it did is it gave me an edge loop. Now check this out. Right now, if you look at it, like I can still like click on it and add um, another edge loop, which I just did, perfectly fine. I can add, I can keep on adding for forever if I want to, right? But if I wanna quit this tool, what you have to do is you press nine. So you press that selection tool to drop the edge loop tool that we just made. Now let's talk about this, what's an edge loop? Now, if I go to edges right here and I can select this edge, in other programs, you can just double click it and get the whole edge. This one can't do that, but I'll show you how to get the whole edge. So if I type in NG for wireframe, now we see this wireframe. So what that tool did is it made an edge that looped around this whole thing. All right, so I'm gonna do it one more time in edge, I mean, in wireframe to show you. So right click, loop path cut. So because I did it along this edge, it's giving me a loop. So it's kind of like working like a belt. Now, if I go to one of these edges, it's gonna go this other way. So whatever edge you're, you're on, it'll put a loop alongside that edge. This top, the same thing. So any of these edges that I'm hitting is gonna give me the same edge loop, just like this. Or just like if I grab one of these. So hopefully that's making sense. NB to bring back wireframe. So I'll just do one more. Now, another thing with this tool is, is if I go over here to this plus sign, it adds on another edge loop. If I go plus again, and they're evenly spaced, all right? And I can keep on adding more and more and more. Also, what I can do is I can take an individual edge loop and slide it. This tool is cool. It's in a program that I used to use named Moto, I mean called Moto. Only thing is what you want to do with this is you don't want to go beyond these other edges. I just think that's a good rule of thumb to not push an edge that's within a boundary past another edge. So just keep it there because you know I can't really like these edges don't have any real difference except for their position. So if you need to move this edge over there or you need an edge over here, just move this one or make another edge. So I'm adding these edges, taking them down, and it's basically how this tool works. All right, so I'll just do these, this set of edges, and I'll press nine to quit the tool. Cool. And of course, they're edge loops, so you can take them and, uh, and do whatever you want. And also when I'm selecting stuff, I'm holding down left mouse button and I can kind of like paint over these edges or paint over whatever. 
and he grabs everything that I'm touching. So I'll just go here, something like this. All right, cool. So we just did edge loops. Let's go on to another tool. Um, there's extrude. Now extrude is this. If I go get a face, actually, did I activate it? No, I didn't activate it. So if I have a face, let me just select the face first. Now, let me press nine. I'm going to select this face, right? And then I'm going to extrude it. So I'm going to right click, go to extrude. And I'm just going to click and drag. So let me do that again. So I selected that face. Um, just like you do with scale, you just click and drag. Now, also what it has down here, this parameters, right? So I can take this and also I can push it in an object as well. So this offset is um, determining how uh, far it's going out. And also we can take this arrow and extend it even more. Also, we can just pull this arrow right here and extend it some more ourselves. So let me do it right here. So I click on this, and you know, I'll do two faces this time. How about that? Right click, extrude, click and drag. All right. Offset variation, not exactly sure that does. I'm sorry, just let me get this right. So right click, extrude, click drag. Now also we have subdivisions. So it'll add divisions along the faces that we just extruded. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then when you want to stop the tool, you press nine to quit. Live selection, this right here, and nine are the same thing. So cool. And then after this, after we have that face, you know, we can do whatever we want with it, scale it in. Or we can right click. the loop path cut wherever we want. Okay, press nine to quit. Now, let me make a cube. Show you this tool. So go over here, I'll press C to make it editable. I'll choose this face right here. I'll do a right click, uh, extrude, drag it out. Oh, wait, 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 I didn't do that right. Press nine, select the face, right click, extrude. Now I go over here and drag it out. Okay. I'm um, gonna press nine to quit. Drag it down or something. And I'll go right here. I'll do it again, right click, extrude. Click and drag. Ooh, kind of looks like a like this. All right, so I have this shape right here. I just clicked on this for object mode. I'm gonna press R for rotate. And to get, um, let's say I wanna rotate this 90 degrees. I click on it, hold shift. It gives me those increments of five. Now it's 90 degrees. I raise it up. All right, very cool, right? So now let's look at the bevel tool. Now bevel is kind of like fillet. So let me look at the fillet real quick. So I can remind you all what that is. Press O to zoom in or S. If I go to fillet, you see this right here. 
So it gives us these rounded edges. Now this looks good because right now, if I typed in NA, it's like this, right? So we have nice rounded edges, looks pretty realistic. And if we take that off, then it looks like this. So this is what you typically see in the video game, like the hard edges. But then when we do like a Pixar movie or whatever we're doing, um, then we want the round edge on our objects. Anyway, I'm gonna type in NB again to get the wireframes. Just wanted to show you all what that was. I'm gonna delete it. I'll go over here. Now, how this works is we're gonna need to get all those uh, edges. So I'll go over here, take my um, edge selection, and I'll just go to rectangle selection. I'll select the whole thing, and then I'll right click, and I'll go to bevel. So I clicked on it. Now it's time to make it work. And remember, in this program, we want to click off of the object and just click and drag. So I'm clicking, and now I have this. That doesn't quite look like it did with the, um, with the what you call it, with the fillet, but we can get it to look like that. All we need to do is go to the subdivision and we up this up. So you see what happens? It's an original edge and then we're adding edges. So one, two, three. So now we're getting that roundness. that we got on the cube. Now if I press nine, if I press NA, now we see we have this, click on it, press S to zoom in. It's got like rounded edges as opposed to the hard edges. Now, one thing about this is the way I did it, we don't need all these edge loops. We just need certain ones, right? And so to get them, there is um, a tool. If we want to select our edge loop, there's a tool called UL, right? So UL. When we click on UL, it gives you the whole loop. So if I click on this right here, See what it's doing, it's giving me this whole loop. If I type in NG, it's selecting the whole thing. But it's really smart, because if I select on this, it gives me the whole front face of this. Which as far as I know, I don't know any other program that's doing it like that. But NA, I mean NB, because when we did that, um, well, let me just, I'll duplicate this, I guess. Let me press nine to get it back into object mode. And now to duplicate this, I'm gonna hold down control and click. Duplicate. So let me do it this way. So I'm gonna select, I'm gonna bevel these edges. Right click, bevel. All right, we have it like that, cool. But right now there's a whole lot of extra edge loops because all of these are here. And let me press nine. A lot of these edge loops on this, along this don't really matter. They're not needed. They don't need to be uh, beveled, I guess what I'm trying to say. So if you are gonna bevel something, it might take a little practice, but you wanna do it like this. So I'm gonna put in edge mode. I'm gonna type in UL to get um, edge loops, I'll click this right here, go down shift, click on this. So I have that, I click on this, hold down shift, click on this. So all I'm really trying to do is get the perimeter edges on this, like this. Wait, so what were you clicking on? Like, can you just go back on that last step where you selected? So you're selecting the edges? Um, um, well, let me go back because I'm not sure. 
where I lost you. So if I want to get these edges, I'm going to press UL. To, so because all right, without UL, I'm just getting one single edge, right? Now, if I want to get like a whole loop of edges or a whole loop here, I have to type in UL. UL. Why is it not doing it? Oh no, I think I have to select the object. Yeah, I have to select the object and then I have to go click on the edges. And now I do UL. And now it's giving me the whole thing. So what I want to do is I want to get this because I want all of the edges on the perimeter. I'll click on this. Then I believe if I just press nine, I'm back in regular edge mode. And I just click on this edge, this edge, this edge. I'm just holding down shift and just clicking all these edges on the corner. So I'm selecting all those edges on the corners and on the front without selecting all of these because they don't really need to be beveled. Now, if I right click and I do a bevel, now it's just extruding on those edges. I mean, beveling on those edges. So I type in NA. click on another object. So it kind of looks the same, except for this one has a lot more edge loops going on than this one. It, maybe this will like be important later on, but just want to explain it to you all. Because you can use this tool in a way where it adds too many edge loops. I mean, this is fine for, you know, right now, but when you really start getting into it and you make a whole lot of objects, you don't want to have like a bunch of useless edges, which is what we have right here. Now, let's say you do have a whole bunch of useless, useless edges. Uh, wait, one more thing. Mm -hmm. On the last one, you said that you were holding down shift. What does that do? Oh, I was basically going like this. I was, uh, I did UL to get the edge loop. Wait, let me click on this. I'll go to edges. I'll do UL. So I was clicking on UL to get the edge loops at first, right? Yeah. Whatever edge loop I wanted, because this gives you the whole loop. It doesn't just select the single edge. Now I was saying, okay, now that I want to select a single edge, I'll press nine to get out of that UL, the loop selection. Now I'm just in single edge selection. Now holding down shift, and I was just selecting single edges. Oh, uh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for the question. So, oh yeah, so let's say I want to delete an edge. There's only one real way to delete edges in this. So usually we can go in and um, let me go to edge and select this right here and press delete. But look what it does. It takes a whole face with it, you know? This program's going to do something weird when you just delete an edge like that. But, if you right click and you go to dissolve, this deletes the edge, all right? Just the edge. Only thing is in a situation like this, it left something called an endgon, which means, um, all right, like a polygon is four edges, four vertices. Endgon is, is, um, it's five or more vertices on a face. You know, what? let me do this. This will make more sense. Now, if I have a cube right here, I'll press S to zoom in. I'll press C to make it editable, right? Now, I'll right click on this and I'll do a uh, loop path cut, right? So I'm cutting right there, I'm cutting right here. Right here, right? So I'll press nine to quit. Now let's say I go to my edge selection, I select the edge, click on it, and then I delete it, all right? 
Well, you know what? I'm sorry, different 3D programs. This one just completely lets you know it's not right because it, it'll take a face with you. Some other programs will leave that edge right there and they'll, uh, it'll just leave vertices behind, which is what I'm gonna try to do right now. So I'm going to right click on this and go to dissolve, all right? So this right here looks like it's a polygon, right? Because it's a cube and you see the edges, right? But look at it, it's got one, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, wait, one, two, three. Oh, it's got six, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six edges, which makes it an n-gon. If it's five or more points, so we go our points, one, two, three, four, four. So basically what I'm trying to say is when you have a, a polygon, you want it to be four sides. You don't want it to be uh, five or more. So a situation like this, this might look weird in some renderings because it's not what you call a quad or a polygon because it's, you know, it's got an extra face. So also speaking of this, right? Let's say we do have a situation like this and we want to connect it. We would right click, go to is it line cut. I'll select that. It goes down here. It kind of has like a little snapping thing. I'll click on it one time. Wait, click on that. Click on that, and now I press nine. And now um, the tools been quit. And now we have like our edge right here back. So yeah, we can do that too. So let me do it right here. Let me do some uh, some cutting. So remember, I'm gonna select this right here click this so I can work on this object now. Go to edge mode. I have these edges right here. If I want to get this whole loop, I type in UL. Gives me the whole loop, right? Wait, UL. So I can select this. I can hold down shift and select a few of them if I like. So let's take out all of these. Now, instead of pressing delete, because look at what delete does, right? Even though it looks kind of cool, all right? You have to right click and go to dissolve. And so that's how you cleanly delete edges, dissolve. Right click. Dissolve. Just in case you're in the other class, right? Maya, it's delete edge. Houdini, it's, I think it's dissolve too. Okay, cool. So we have our uh, edge loop thing. Um, right click. See what the other tools. Oh, bridge. That's what it is. So I want to bridge something. So, oh, look at this. You see the icon right there? That means that the tool is still going on and it's still activated. So, nine to quit that. Um, Ah, and another thing is this right here. If you see this box right here, this is what you call the pivot. Now, if I click right here, enable access, well, um, uh, this program is called access, but um, we can change the location of this. Right now, if I press R to rotate, it's gonna rotate around this point, right? But what if I want it to rotate around the center? or just another location. I can just press this, press E, and now it'll let me move this to wherever I would like. So now that it's in the middle, right? And I'm gonna press, I think if you press L, yeah. And it looks like an L, so that's convenient. So L, it's live, L again, now it's like solid. So now if I press R, it'll rotate from the middle. Let me press, E to move, 
I'll press L again. And when you see the little box, it make, lets you know that it's, uh, okay. So when you press L, uh, okay. It was like going off. So you could either press it or press L. I'd say just press it just to be safe. I'll go down here. I go like this. And now I'll press L again, E, I mean R to rotate. And now it's rotating from this area. So just so you know how to do that. And remember, because Cinema 4D, you could animate this. I'm not going to animate this now, but we could. Wait, so just making sure Ooh. to move it, is it L or is it E? Or can you use both to move the point to rotate? All right, it's like this, right? So we have our object here. If we want to move it, E is move, all right? So anytime okay. you want to move object, you press E. If you want to rotate an object, you press R. Yeah. And if you want to scale object, you press T. When I was doing this over here, I was moving the pivot. Because if we look at this shape, I'll press S to zoom in. The pivot is perfect because it's, you know, it's a basic shape. So the pivot is in the dead center. So that's L to move. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if I want to move this right. pivot, but but you need to press E first, right? E to E E, so you have the move tool, it's right here, and then you want to press L, and then when you see the box, see I'm pressing it and it's like going off, which is weird because now it's like locking in. But when I pressed it before, it was like. I don't know, maybe it's a safety mechanism, I don't know. Because it's like, all right, I hold down L, I have the box, then I can move the pivot, then I let it go. Maybe it's something like that, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, so as long as you see the box right there and this thing is blue, that means that the axis, you know, you can move it, move the axis to wherever you want, and then you press it again, and then you can rotate it from wherever. So I'd say if you want to be safe, start pressing this button, but then later on, like, you know, you can, um, you can, uh, I guess, use your keyboard shortcuts when you start getting more comfortable. For right now, I would use that. But the shortcuts you should be using are E, R, and T for sure. You should not be going up here, clicking that. Okay, um, it's the axis, hold on. Ah, bridge, that's what it was. Okay, so let's say I want to um, bridge some polygons. So I'll do a control click to bring this out here. So I have two of these letters, all right? or structures or whatever you want to call them, right? I'm gonna select both of them, press S, just so I can uh, focus in on them a little bit more. So check this out. Let's say I wanna take this face right here and bridge it to this face. So I wanna have it kind of like, a, um, like if I was to take this and then do extrude and bring it all the way over there right but i all but i want it to be one piece so this is going to be one solid piece to do that i need to uh bridge these faces and to do that oh look the tool still activated right so i press nine to get out of it hold down both of them so i'm holding down shift i mean select both of them that's what i meant to say so select this hold down shift select this one right click and i'll do um there's connect objects, which leaves the two objects, and there's connect objects plus delete. So let's do uh, connect objects. Well, actually, just to see exactly what this is doing, I'll select everything else in this scene. You have these two. Right click, connect objects. So what this did is this object is still here, this object is still here, 
And then this one is the connected version. Now, if we don't want to see these other objects, I can click on this and go to um, make them red. Right here, which means that they've, uh, the visibility is gone. If I want to bring them back, click right here. So this is the connected, the, the two that are now joined, but it left the two old ones, which is kind of cool. Or we could also select these two and then do a right click connect objects plus delete. So now it just connected these and it deleted the old ones. So whichever one you wanna do, that's fine. So um, what we'll do is let's connect these faces or bridge these faces. So I'll go to my face right here. I'll click on this face and I want to um, bridge it to this face over here. So I'll right click and go to, where's that, bridge. So I selected this face, take this, I want to do something wrong, bridge. Why am I not doing this? All right. Doing this wrong. Shift, select both faces. Bridge. Ah, OK, that's what it was. Sorry, different programs get confused sometimes. All right. so um. You have to select this face right here, shift, select this face. And now we go right click, we go to bridge. And now it's like I click and then we have this right here and then nine, and then it's bridge. So let me do it again with like a cube. So we have this cube right here. I'll press C to make it editable. Select this face right here, press E. Let's raise it up. Let's extrude it, all right? Click, drag. So I have a whole bunch of columns right here. Control click to duplicate. I'm still in the tool, so I'll press nine. I'll shift select both of these and I'll right click and I'll do connect objects plus delete. Then I'll go over here, I'll go get a face. I have this face right here. And I shift select this face right here. If on a bridge, I right click and I go to bridge and I'll just click on one of these corners one time. So I'm just left clicking and then let go. And then it's bridged and I'll press nine to quit the tool. Let me try it with two faces now. So I'll click right here, I have these two faces. I'll press NG, oh no, NG, just to make sure I didn't choose anything else. Cause sometimes you can click on a face and then it'll give you like an extra face on the other side or something like that, so. I'm just making sure. But in time, when you model enough, you'll figure that out for yourself. So NB, so I selected those two, shift, select these two right here, right click, bridge. I'll just select right here. Just click and kind of let go. <laughs> and then nine, and there you go. Check it out. It's almost looking like something already. Control D. Oh, no, no, wait, not Control D. Sorry, that's duplicating my. I meant Control click. Now we have this. 
Now I got myself a cube. Let me go into four-way mode on middle mouse cl button click right here. Middle mouse button click. So I'm in four-way mode right now. So we can see our perspective, right, front, top. I'll take this. And look what I'm about to do. I'm about to scale this out. You know, I'm about to press C to make it editable. I'm about to get these points right here. I'll get my rectangle. You see what's going to happen right here. So I'm just doing it in orthographic mode. So I'll move this right here. Move this right here. Take these bottom ones, move them up. Now I'm in this side over here. I'll grab the whole thing. Move it over. Put in point mode again. Take this, put this right here, this right here. Oh, I was looking at the wrong part. I was trying to get it on this. It's all good. So I'll just take this, move it right here. Scale it up a little bit. Now this is the top, right? I'll scale this out or I'll just use my points. Ring tangle selection. Drag it out. Like 